couple slides to introduce this topic. Right, so as Maddie introduced, uh, introduced, introduced me, uh, I'm Bud Shaw. I'm a solution architect with GSI, and um, I've been around JD Edwards for going on 23 years now. Um, so uh, I kind of cover the gamut of mostly uh, applications and, and functionality. Um, here is my email. So any questions you have that may come up afterwards and, you know, or during, even during the presentation, feel free to, to hit me up with an email. I'll be uh, happy to respond and, and answer any questions or, or support in anything as I, that I can. So um, this present today is, uh, you know, using in release 23 and tools 9270, uh, Oracle and JD Edwards introduced this update manager uh, into the applications. Um, it, uh, this feature then allows anybody with, and I, and I shouldn't say anybody, I mean, I'm not a CNC person who would normally be the type of a uh, role that does a, uh, an, uh, an ESU application and update, but I've been around JD Edwards long enough to understand some of those processes. So I was able to pick up on this new application in JDE that allows, you know, a business analyst or a CNC, um, like any other JD Edwards application can be secured uh, to a particular role within your organization uh, that allows for uh, ESU updates. So what this uh, this this web only application uh, allows you to go ahead uh, and up uh, download, deploy, and 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 um, uh, and uh, add the de deploy and um, uh, and uh, roll out an ESU update within JD Edwards using only the web and the, the particular application. So what I'm going to do is walk through the process here today to show you uh, show you the applications and the way it would work, um, and actually download and up and, and import and deploy uh, a, an ESU update into my 927 uh, tools release 23 environment. So um, you know if you think about it, you know. Um, well, then this is right from Oracle. You know, it allows customers to apply patches anytime and anywhere. So it's kind of in support of their um, uh, code current uh, uh, drive to have everybody get to a, a code current release and then be able to just keep on rolling forward with new updates uh, within it. So, you know, software updates are provided in a, a PAR file, uh, kind of a platform agnostic, if you will. Um, and then you bring the, uh, um, the uh, PAR file into the application um, and then uh, uh, deploy it. Um, and then use the other uh, web application in JDE, which is the web OMW, which has been enhanced uh, to, to work together with this app, with the, um, the ESU, uh, the software update application to go ahead and uh, deploy the, those, any ESU as you went along. It also includes some good analytics and it makes it easy to see what's going on and, and track uh, these, these changes. So, uh, allows for you know patch patch updates easier and uh, you know from my perspective I mean many times I've had just you know I found a bug or something like that and there was a new ESU and um, I could not do it on my own I had to put in a ticket or whatever and have a a, uh, a CNC person when they got time to go ahead and and apply the ESU for me uh, and you know so it just it stretched the time out and the effort to get this, you know, maybe a little ESU in uh, to, to fix a problem that I was having or one of my users was having. So that's kind of what I'm gonna walk through today is that kind of scenario. So this is a, a screenshot of the uh, a web uh, update manager. Uh, you can see they've given us a nice little uh, an analytic to capture and track the status of the of the ESU. So here's one, uh, an ESU uh, JN20099, right? Um, it's completed normally. You can see the steps it's, it's been uh, gone through, copied it over, and, and it walks through it and captures and tracks the status of it. Uh, in the bottom here, we can see the, you know, the update, you know, uh, plan, uh, for it and, and 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 track it on through. So this is the main application that we'll take advantage of uh, to apply, download and apply, deploy deploy an ESU. Uh, so there's other 
features that comes along with it, um, uh, software impact analysis report, uh, the impact analysis online tool. Uh, I'm not quite sure if they got it ported over to the web yet, uh, but the report certainly works. Uh, risk rating assignments uh, to to track and, and and assign you know what's the risk of of uh, of employing this ESU um, special instructions that may need to go along with it um, and then a software history report. So uh, as I mentioned already, there's been enhancements to the web OMW um, and then the uh, web application as a web application for package assembly and and deployment. So um, these two main modules, the 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 uh, P uh, 98220W, which is the web OMW, and this new application, P96470W, which is really a, a web port of the, uh, of the, uh, uh, the, the, the FAT client uh, uh, to, de to de uh, de download and deploy uh, these PAR files. Uh, you know, Oracle, if you're not aware of, is moving further and further away from what we, you know, uh, you know, fondly call the FAT client or the Windows client for package deployments and ESUs and things like that. It's really at the point now with the 927 tools release 23, the only thing that you would be dependent on a Windows client for anymore is the report design aid or the form design aid tools. Uh, other things you can do even, you know, in the web, in the web OMW, you know, uh, bring in event rules, uh, status structures, other kinds of things. And then, of course, you know, uh, you know cr create a package and deploy and promote them from, you know, like a, a, a DV to or from a PY to a PD and, and, and deploy it through. So they keep on enhancing that to go further and further away, making uh, JD Edwards a, a more web-based application uh, without the need for a Windows client. So this is a screenshot I put together a, a little page, which I like to do, uh, that has the applications that I'm going to walk through and pre present. So th the most important one we'll be doing here is the work with software updates, right? Um, and that's that P90, P96-47W uh, application that I talked about. So um, let's, without further delay, let's see one and walk it through. Okay, so the, the first thing we're going to do, and I've logged into the Oracle Update Center, and I'm searching for a, 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 an ESU update. So I'm looking for one because my scenario here is um, I have a, there's a, found a bug in the uh, blanket PO release program that when somebody reviews the, the blanket, uh, re, the release, the, or, the release order, they review the order. Um, it calls the quantity in the blanket order to revert back to original state. So there's kind of a bug. So um, I found this ESU, uh, uh, JN20095. It's part of this uh, update. And we can look at the details of this, um, of what it is. These are the baseline uh, uh, multi-platform notifications. Uh, and this is really the bug list and the error um, and then we're down here into the JN20095, which is the ESU uh, that we're, we're interested in. So you'll start your process by coming here, downloading it, add it to your basket and download it. So I've already downloaded it to my, uh, my uh, laptop here. So I'm gonna go ahead and open up my, my, uh, my file explorer. So here is the PAR file sitting in my, uh, on my, on my desktop, uh, on my laptop, um, that I'm going to go ahead and bring in and uh, uh, deploy, uh, package, and 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 update. So I'm going to start by logging in. And uh, as I said, I got this page that I put together for us to 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 make it easy to navigate. So this is my 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 uh, uh, demo environment here. Here's my software updates page, and we're going to start, as I said, within this work with software updates application. Uh, we'll, we'll enter the application, and then we're in here in the application, and this is the little 
uh, uh, cafe one display uh, of, of this layout, which is calling this monitoring uh, 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 graphic. Uh, and you'll see as we go along with this new ESU update that this thing will keep us tracked and let us know how it's moving along. Uh, so it's kind of a nice little feature. So I'll start with the form and I'm gonna import my ESU. So I'll choose my file. And we're going with this JN20095. And we're going to load that in. So we're in here and we can already watch, already see from the update status uh, to see what's going on with it. So we're only at 25% uh, 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 of the process to go ahead and, and deploy this ESU. Right? Okay, so now uh, we will select this one and show it as a web deployment. And we're going to go to a, a form and we're going to deploy this ESU. When it does this, uh, it's gonna go ahead and we're gonna pick our, um, our, our, um, our, uh, uh, our environment. I only have one in here, uh, which is this pristine environment. And if you select backup, it'll take a backup so that you can revert back um, and back it out. Uh, and uh, also, you know, create the OMW project and package assembly. So that's the connection between this application and the P98220W, the web OMW, uh, to, uh, uh, to, to go ahead and build the package and, and, and finish up the, uh, the, the deployment of the, of the ESU. Um, as I said, if you, got a, if you have a backup, that means you can restore back to original specs. Uh, without a problem. From here, we can go to a row exit, for example, um, and see what's going up with it and see what objects it's affecting. You can see here's the object name uh, um, and, and see what's going on. Uh, it's marked for selection. We could change the status and not and unmark it. So there's really only one uh, object that's getting, getting picked up in here, XT4311. Z2 is example. So you may have a more complex uh, ESU with multiple uh, uh, objects being affected in here. Mm -hmm. Okay, so we're gonna go ahead and close this uh, 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 affected objects form. And we click okay to then go ahead and start the, uh, the deployment process. So we'll watch this guy go. You can see it's navigating and as it progresses along, it'll change the percent complete on this um, uh, um, as it goes. So there it is, it's finished up uh, getting that package uh, deployed to that pristine environment. I mean, as you can see there, we could have selected multiple environments and, and hit them all at the same time, you know. And if we look down in here, we can see what, uh, let's see here, we do a find in here. We can see these are the reports that got ran by that deployment. So uh, the R96701 and uh, 700W are new applications for deploying that come along with this enhancement uh, to, to, J, to, to, to JD Edwards, okay? All right, so um, so we can go back to our um, and see. So I wanted to show you. There's a, a corresponding backup file here. Is what I wanted to do. Show you that one. Right, so I go back to my uh, page. I'll leave this application open because we selected the backup file. We can look at the software update files and we can see that here is the 95 uh, power file, uh, one and then a backup and the other one is a backup. It knows the, the, the difference between the two. Mm -hmm. 
So now we've got uh, the, the package, you know, deployed out to uh, our environment. Um, and we're gonna go ahead and go into the web OMW. And if we look for our, our, uh, our project, You can see that for this one, it's created a project because uh, remember we, we selected that to create the project um, and it's in the web OMW here uh, within, within JD Edwards. Right? So we can go ahead and uh, select uh, the, uh, and see that we've got this web uh, object, uh, this web OMW out there and this new project, right? Um, and we can see objects associated to it that's the one we just saw uh, when we uh, navigated through the deploy step, um, and we're and we can see that project is in here. Then so, so now we've got that in there, and the next thing we can do is do a package assembly. So here's the package assembly. We can find. Our package um, here is uh, JN20092095. And we can take a look at any individual objects that were there. So there's the path code that it's going to go to, the individual objects again. Um, and then we can uh, uh, just check and make sure everything is okay here. And now we can go to a. a, a a, a, for, a, a form exit here. See, is this where I want to go? Define the build. Um, and we're only going to do, I want to deselect the client, I think is what I want to do here because I don't have this one. Because we're doing this on a, uh, on a, a, a uh, environment that does not even have a Windows client um, in here. So, I'm deselecting that. Uh, it's going to central objects, uh, error, condition stop on error. Um, and we make sure we did this uh, one. Verify the servers. Just checking things. So there's the only the primary server that we're going to go to, right? Make sure this one's selected. And I think we're good at this and we can say, okay. And then we can say, okay. And now we're looking at the packages is being built. Um, and we can activate it. You can see it's turned from a red box to green circle, and it's being uh, the, the being built. The package is being built, um, and then we can submit the package build. Okay, we'll get this guy fired off here. Let's see that this status should be approved. There's the build completed successfully and the build is submitted. Uh, what I didn't should point out here is we, you know, had a package update and we could have a status of that, uh, that, you know, that goes through an approval um, if somebody gets the package ready and then you wanted to uh, segregate uh, duties to, to do it. Okay.
No, I'm missing a, a checkbox on something. Did this, I thought, deployment. Ah, this is where I wanted to click. This is what I missed. So I want to deploy it to the enterprise server. That's when I went there. I ne needed to, to check this one. We select that uh, JDE trial. That's my demo uh, uh, environment. We can uh, go ahead and then click OK. And the status is approved. That's the step I was talking about that could be uh, held over for, uh, uh, to um, to somebody else to approve it before it gets uh, actually applied and done. But at this point in done, at this point in time, we have downloaded the ESU, uh, deployed it out, built the package, and deployed that package. So we can go from here and we can then deploy that one. And this, and we are done once this finishes up to status here. Wait for this, it's still processing. These are all things that would normally be done on a Windows client. Um, or, so we'll let this guy finish up uh, as it gets deployed. While that's processing. I'll take a look at Q&A. I'll have to look up the UDO name uh, for the download page. Um, I'll, I'll look it up for you in a second, Angie, Angela, sorry. Well, I can let that go and we can jump over here to this page. I'm sure it's with an X suffix. Here you go, An Angela. P96470X. Okay, let's go back with our package deployment. Refresh. There we go, and we are done. Built and the package has been deployed. So we have completed the deployment, the, uh, the, the update, the ESU update. Those are the, the steps. I mean, there's more analytics and things we could do as we go along, but basically that is finished. We can always go back in um, to our work with software updates and see the status of that guy, um, see if uh, norm completed normally see the objects, you know, the history is, is always out there. So, okay. And there you have it. I mean, I, I uh, sorry, we're about 10 minutes ahead of time. So you get some of your, your time back, but that is basically the, uh, the uh, steps to go through to deploy this. So back to you, Maddie, I'll stop sharing. Thank you. I'll watch for, uh, do, do, do. I'll watch for any Q and A that's coming through. So, okay, you can share. Perfect. Okay, can you see my screen, bud? Um, no, I see your image picture. Okay, sorry, I think it was taking a little bit of time, sorry. All right, okay. let's see, now can you see it? Yes, now I can see it. Can you see the girl? I do. <laughs> okay, perfect. Um, thank you so much, bud. Um, we're going to cover some follow-up items and then go into our Q&A. So if you have any questions, go ahead and put those in the question and answer box. Um, also, I attached bud's email right here for any of you guys that want to write it down, um, just in case you have any questions that come up later on. Mm -hmm. um, okay. 
Um, again, this is me speaking, not Bud. Um, mm -hmm. <laughs> but again, Bud's still here if you have any questions. So yeah. um, I'm, I want to talk typing, about I'm, I'm typing some answers in the head, so I'm going to go on mute while I type those. So okay, perfect. If I have anything, I'll I'll call you over. Um, but some educational resources I want to go over with you guys before we end are um, some things that GSI provide to give you guys more information and keep you up to date. Um, we do provide our weekly educational webcast, um, as well as our um, monthly insider from GSI. So it's called GSI Insider. It's a newsletter. Um, our YouTube channel is also a great resource to watch videos that we produce um, from webcast, as well as how-to videos. Um, we also have conferences, regional user group meetings, and events you can register for on our website, um, as well as virtual workshops and um, on-site workshops. Um, our next um, webcast that we have um, or workshop is on February 22nd, um, and that is Wednesday, February 22nd. So that is coming up soon. If you want to register for that event, you can go to getgsi.com and click the resources tab, go to JD Edwards, and as we have our blog, our newsletter, conferences, and webcasts there to eat as we read to eat. Um, let us know if you have any questions about that, but you can also register for any upcoming events you would like to go to. As for social media, we would like to stay connected with you guys. Um, this is a way that we keep you guys updated on all the events we have coming up and also that are currently listed on our website. Um, YouTube is also a great resource for anyone who wants to go back and watch our webcast. Um, we do post on-demand webcasts on our channel. Um, I'm also going to let you guys know that if you've made it to this far in the webcast, or yeah, in the webcast, um, you are going to be entered to win a 25 Amazon gift card. If you guys do um, complete this survey and I'm going to copy it and paste it into our chat as we speak. Um, and I'm gonna give you guys a few seconds to do that. It does take about one minute, um, but you are entered into a raffle um, to win $25 from Amazon. So that's a really fun thing. So go ahead and take a few seconds to complete that survey. It's in the chat. Um, and then we'll go on to our question and answer section. But are you seeing any other questions that you see? Oh, the chat. Oh, disabled. she's just somebody commented that chat is disabled. Yeah, I'm going to post it again and let's see what that does. Let me know if that one comes to you guys. I, okay, don't, see any, I don't see any new questions, but uh... yeah, I don't see new questions. Also, for anyone, um, if you don't have time to answer the survey, you will have a certain amount of time after the webcast um, that we still get um, survey information from, um, but I would do it now that way. Mm -hmm. Get the good luck in. <laughs> and as I said earlier, feel free to reach out after this with any questions or whatever. As you can tell, I'm not a CNC guy, so I had to walk through my notes and how to do it, but we effectively did it, you know, in, in a very short period of time, um, you know. And it's so a good I, way to I'm show that anyone stoked. can do it. I'm pretty stoked about it because, like I said, there's been times in my life that I've been stuck waiting and waiting for to get things done, you know, and. I did get a notice that someone says there's two questions in the chat. I do not see them. Um, Mm, I see. Okay. Well, I, uh, okay. I, I answered, see somebody, Angela asked a question and I typed, I answered and then Nathan and I answered and then, no. So I think I, I got them all. I think Rob's going to copy them and send them to me. So okay, all right. just so we have them and then I'll read them off to you. Okay. Thanks, Rob. I don't know why Zoom is being so touchy today, but. Mm -hmm. Oh, he says, I think they're the ones Bud saw. So um, if you have questions and we have not answered them, um, Bud, do you mind typing in your email in the chat just for everyone to copy if they need it? Sure. Perfect. I think. Mm-hmm. I, um, I see who can see messages as hosts and panelists. 
Um, so that's not going to work so good. Um, I think if I post type my email and you know what, um, um, that I only hosts and panelists can see it. Um, so it'll come up at, at the end of the webcast on the, um, oh, okay. ending. So when they, when the, when the webcast ends, they'll get an email with your email on it, but I'm mm -hmm. going to read off the ones that, um, Rob sent me, um, one is from Claudia and her question is, so is this exactly like the old ESU deployments? Will it replace it? And, and I, I answered, uh, typed the answer to it, so maybe only Claudia could see it. But oh. it is very much like the old ESU deployments. It does, I don't think they're going to get rid of the Windows client deployments. Um, you can do them either way. Um, okay. They're just, the way they're writing it in, into the same tables or whatnot, it's a web. In fact, when you start looking at the applications, you know, for, uh, they're, they're, you know, very similar in, in nomenclature. Um, so you can still use a Windows client if you want, or you can use the web client. Okay, perfect. And Claudia, hopefully that answered your question. Um, but Nathan also had a question. I don't know if you answered this one already, but he... Yeah. Um, or she said, um, can this happen for old ESUs or only certain ones going forward? No, it can happen for old ESUs. Um, uh, you know, it, um, the fact that what I did there was an older ESU. Okay. Yeah, when you, when you, uh, when you, they've, they've redid them. So I think there's a, no, that, there's something like that. Yeah. Old ESUs are good. Okay. Um, well, I think that is all the questions that we have for right now. And again, if you have any questions, I know we've repeated a lot, um, so I don't want to say it too much, but you can email Bud and you will get his email at the end of the webcast, as well as the survey link, just in case you didn't have time or if it didn't work for you. Um, but thank you guys so much for coming to our webcast today, and I hope you guys did enjoy it. Um, again, if you would like to register for any of our future webcasts, you can go to our website. We would love to see you again. Um, and for those who did fill out the survey, we will be doing a raffle here shortly, and then we will send the winner um, the $25 Amazon gift card. So be looking out for that. Um, but thank you guys again for joining our presentation today, and thank you, Bud, for doing an amazing thank job. You. And we look thank forward to seeing you guys again soon. So I hope everyone has a great day. Bye, everybody. Bye -bye. Have a good day.